What's up, Dream Media family? This is Zach, and I got Kellen over here as well in the house. We have got this insane 100 inch Hisense TV in the house. Today, we are gonna be making a video for you guys showing you how to wall mount it. We are so very thankful for everybody's support. These actually sold out immediately, and we cannot be more grateful for everybody's support. So we thought we'd make a little video showing you how to get it up on the wall. We also made a quick setup video showing you how to put on the feet and go through some of the basic settings and Kellen's initial thoughts on the product. So be sure to check that video out. We also are gonna be making a video about these RBH 8300AX Hi-Fi active speakers here. We have it hooked up to a Hi-Fi Rose and we have the Salamander Designs Barcelona cabinet down there below as well, which we'll be making making content on in future videos. But enough talking guys, you know if you wanna purchase anything home theater related, just give us a call. We have nationwide free shipping. Let's get into this video. All right guys, so this is gonna be an how-to installation-based video. Let's talk about the tools that are needed in order for you to mount your new Hisense TV to the wall. So you're gonna need a drill in order to drill in your lag bolts. You're gonna need a drywall knife to cut your sheetrock. If you'd like to hide your wires inside of the wall, this is just a very basic sheetrock knife. And we're gonna be putting inside of the wall a recessed box. And this will allow us to hide all of our cables, put our Apple TV, Roku, small little devices inside of the wall hidden. Um, and also allow us to put our receptacle recessed so that the TV can be mounted as close to the wall as possible. So we have a receptacle right here, and we're gonna be tapping off of our power outlet that's down low on the wall right now. For those of you that have a Samsung One Connect box, uh, an external HDMI box, um, we do sell the 14 by 20 inch version. Um, this is the 14 by 14, and since we're just using a high sense, it has all of the HDMIs built internally into the television. A tape measure, a level to ensure that the TV is level. Don't forget a stud finder. It will show you exactly where your studs are in the wall, and then that's where we're gonna drill our last in. When you're mounting a TV of this size, 100 inches, guys, over 100 pounds, don't use sheetrock anchors, guys. Bolt it into the framing of the home so that you don't have to worry about it going anywhere. We're now selling Canto mounts. You can get this on our website. Uh, this is just a flat mount that is rated to hold this 100 inch TV. All right guys, so I always like to start out with just general positioning, getting ready for where we actually want the TV to end up in the end. In this situation, we want it 16 inches off the top of our cabinet. So we're gonna go 24 and a half plus 16. So what I'm gonna do is mark out with a pencil, 40 and a half. That's where we want the bottom of the TV. And this TV has a total height of 50 and a quarter. What I like to do is kind of hold up the tape measure just to get an idea of, of where the TV is gonna land. In this case, this is Kellen's home. Kellen is our national sales director, so he gets the perks of uh, playing with all the fun toys that we sell here. So Kellen, what do you think? Should we go a little higher, maybe cover up those screws? Uh, or do you want to go at 16 inches? No, I think if we can cover those screws, it may be a little high for whenever you're setting down viewing. But what I don't want is to potentially put any equipment on top of here that may be covering the bottom of the screen. Okay, so now that we know where the bottom of our TV is going to be right here, we need to determine how we want it centered on the wall. Let's get the width of the TV, 88 inches. So 174. So this is center of the wall right here. You know, let's check and see where our studs are. Yeah, so we got a stud here. Typically your studs are gonna sit on 16 inch centers. Take a look one more time, 88 inches. If we do 44, you want it to cover all that, right? So I'd probably go over just a little. I'd center it right here. Now we're going to bolt our Canto mount 
the arms to the back of the television so we can determine the height that the bracket needs to be bolted into the wall. All right, guys, there's four screws in the back of the television. Kellen's gonna go ahead and pop all four of those off while I open up the mount and grab the arms. These arms here are gonna bolt on to the back of the television. And as you can see, they have the little quick release right here. You pull down in case you need to pop it off the wall. And then they have the screw right here in the top for level adjustment. I really like that, that's great. So like say if you get it up there on the wall and it's not level with earth, no problem. You can just screw these and it'll kind of raise up the left side or the right side or raise it down, whatever you prefer. It's a very, very nice feature on flat mounts. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and bolt this to the back of the television. Canto does a really good job of providing a variety of different options. So this is a universal TV mount that can be used with any 100 inch television. Now that Kellen has the brackets on the back of the TV, we're gonna bolt this into the wall and those brackets are going to clamp right onto the edge of the mount like this. So what I like to do now is measure the distance between the bottom of the TV and where the mount is gonna sit, where it's actually gonna clamp in. And then what I like to do is mark out my first couple and do a pilot hole. Makes it a little bit easier. Now we're gonna move on to installing our lag bolts into our studs. If you're doing it by yourself, you really need to drill a pilot hole, but Kellen's holding it up there for me, so I'm just gonna drill it right in. You wanna hit at least two studs, minimum. We got our installation template right here for our in-wall enclosure. We're gonna cut a giant hole and this is gonna fit inside the wall so that we can put our power receptacle. If you have small stuff like Apple TV, Roku, that connect one box we were talking about, you can put it all hidden in between the studs so that the TV sits as flush as possible to the wall. We're gonna wanna line up this cutout within the same stud bay of our power receptacle. So we have a power receptacle right over here and we know that we have a stud right here on the left hand side of our electrical box so we're going to cut our hole right here. So we want to leave a little gap between the studs so that those hooks can grab the sheetrock. Now we just need to cut this out with our drywall knife and to do so you're just going to punch a hole like this and just start cutting. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, guys, is cut another single gang hole down here to be used as a pass-through plate and also give me access to the back side of this receptacle. We're gonna be hardwiring this into the home's electrical system. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, keep in mind we do sell something called a power bridge kit. If you're not familiar with doing a high voltage electricity or if you don't wanna pay somebody to do it, I'd highly recommend asking our consultants about a power bridge kit, essentially. It has a female plug down here and it allows you just to, uh, with a female to male connector, like an extension cord plug into your existing outlet. It's not as clean, but it is easier and it's uh, really DIY friendly. So next we're gonna take our Romex and run it from up here down to here. Again, if you're not familiar with electrical, just hire somebody to do it for you. In this home, the house is wired with 12-2, which is the gauge, the thickness of the wire. And you have to match the same thickness of the wire to your new termination point. So if your home's wired with 14-2, you put in 14-2 if it's Wired with 12-2, like this home, we're gonna use 12-2 Romax. Now there's a few different ways to fish wire, guys. Um, with Romax, it's really nice and firm like this. A lot of the time you can straighten it out and just shoot it straight down the wall. If you're having trouble running your wire, um, you can pick up something called fish tape or fish rods. And with fish rods, you can attach your Romax to it and help push your wire through the wall. So we got our wire stripped back and I'm gonna go ahead and take my shielding off my neutral and hot wire as well, so that I can make connections there. We're gonna, this is called a knockout. You're gonna knock out one of these sections so you can put the receptacle in there. 
Now we can pop our receptacle into here, feed our power cable through. And those dog legs here on the back side are gonna clamp this bezel and the sheetrock together like that. All right, now we're gonna work on our punch outs for our electrical box. So I'm gonna go ahead and gonna pop out one of these and our wire will go right in through this hole and we'll clamp it down with that screw right there. And then we're gonna screw down this one single screw inside to hold our wire nice and tight. Next, we're going to make our connections to our actual receptacle. So what you're gonna do is take your, your positive, your black wire, your neutral, your white wire, and your ground wire, and do a little loop like that. And then we're gonna connect on our power outlet. The gold side, you connect to the black, and the silver, you connect to the white. And you wanna put the screw on to where it's clockwise, so when you turn the screw right, it actually pulls the wire into the screw, making a nice and secure tight connection. When you're using these metal boxes or you're doing commercial work, I like to wrap your terminals in electrical tape and that'll just ensure that the connection doesn't get bumped and short out on the metal. So you just take your electrical tape like this and wrap it around your outlet. Now we're gonna push our receptacle in and then we're gonna screw it right in. And then last but not least, we wanna put our wall plate on and we're just gonna cover up our outlet. All right guys, uh, this box is ready to rock and roll up top. Now we need to tap off our outlet down here. If you were gonna be hooking up HDMI cables for like an AVR or sources to live in an entertainment console, I'd recommend running them at the exact same time because this hole here is great for accessing the space and allowing me to put my Romax through, but it's even better for just doing a home run for your HDMI cables, which we're gonna put a plate on here for future upgrades down the road. I'd recommend killing the breaker just so you don't have to worry about shocking yourself. We're gonna now kill the breaker and pull this receptacle out. We're gonna pull our receptacle out and we're gonna pop a hole in the back of our box right here. And that way I can bring my wires in through the back side here. We got our Romax fed through the back of the box with one of those punch outs, just like I showed you the punch out up here. So we're gonna feed our Romax up into our existing box. And then we're gonna strip back some of our wire. Cut back our shielding. Strip back our wires like that. And then we're gonna connect right to our screw terminals on the side of the power receptacle. All right, now that we've made all our connections, I'm gonna go ahead and screw our outlet right back into the wall. Put our wall plate back on. Kellen kind of jumped the gun here, as you guys can see. He's already got the Apple TV in there and he's popping the panel on. I really like this particular enclosure. It just keeps everything super clean. Um, and you can see it even has these holes here on the front for ventilation, but it'll allow us to mount our TV super tight and close to the wall. Moving along, guys. If you like this type of content, this like more raw, DIY. Drop comments down below. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, that way we can determine what type of content to make for you guys. Because like I had said uh, earlier in our video, we do home theater videos, we do hi-fi videos, we do unboxing videos, we do how-to videos. I mean, really just a plethora of different types of content. I think we have over a thousand videos now on our YouTube channel. Crazy. Ready? Yep. Two people required. This is not a 65, 55 inch TV. This is a hundred inches and it's heavy. So definitely uh, get your buff friends. All right, Dream Media family, that is a wrap on our Hisense 100 inch TV 
installation. I wanted to give you guys a little insight into exactly how this is accomplished since we had such an overwhelming amount of support and orders on this particular model. Now, due to the success of the Hisense uh, TVs on our holiday sales, um, we are considering selling TVs on a national level, other brands. So stay tuned to the Dream Media website for all of the latest offerings. We do have you covered nationwide on everything from home theater projectors and screens, amplifiers, processors, AVRs, as well as speakers, subwoofers, and everything to bring the system together. And keep in mind, for you guys out there that don't want to do it yourself, we have an extensive preferred installer network in 28 different states who can help you get it put in. And we sell all of the equipment. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a little different than our typical installations here recently, giving you a little insight into TV mounting. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and be sure to smash that subscribe button down below for more. Keep in mind, everything you saw in this video is gonna be linked down below from the Salamander Designs cabinet, the Barcelona model, to our RBH 8300AX speakers, to our Hi-Fi Rose, and of course, our Hisense 100-inch TV. It'll all be down in the links below. Thank you for your support. All right, guys, till next time, this is Zach at Dream Media Home Theater. Thank you for watching.